pull this tight. Anchor both sides. Then uh, I want a piece right along that bottom edge. Hold that in. So when I take this off my foot with tape running in two directions, it's not going to come apart. And maybe just one more piece. Maybe, uh, maybe a little more around the back of the heel. Okay, I think that's it. Now I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, draw some lines on here. Uh, one would be going right down the center of the front. So this is just an eyeballing kind of thing. Actually, there's a way that we we will uh, eventually work this out to make sure it's right. But for right now, I'm going to go there. I'm also going to go right up against the cardboard all around with the marker. And uh, up the back of the heel, which I'll need my assistant to do. Got my taping done. I want to cut my foot free. So I want to cut right along that that line where the cardboard is. So you can use an X-Acto knife or a knife like this. Now I'm free. I'm going to uh, use these scissors that um, won't cut me, bandage kind of scissors, um, to cut this off. So um, I can cut down the front of the foot or down the back of the heel. If you don't have these scissors and you want to use a small pair of manicure scissors, put a put some tape over the pointed end. It would be nice if I had a, another line kind of uh, up here to show me where a shoe might might go. So I'll add that.
Okay, then I'll get my foot out of here, and we're ready for the next. Cut the duct tape off of uh, my foot. I took the two halves that I had, because I cut them down the center toe line and down the back of the heel, and um, had to take a three-dimensional pattern and change it into a two-dimensional pattern. So I took the duct tape and flattened it out. By that, I, of course, it's not possible to do this without a lot of wrinkling, and each wrinkle means you're distorting the pattern somewhat, um, but I started right down the middle to flatten it out and then did my best to kind of ease it up that way. In the toe area, I made little slits, like three little slits here, so that I could flatten this out as much as possible instead of, of just mashing it down. So I really want this, each little slit will be some extra toe room in the pattern. And um, so then when I got it, in the, in back, at the back of the heel, I did just mash it. I didn't try to um, cut the little slits because I want, I want this pattern to curve under the uh, bottom of the heel as much as possible. So then I did that with both halves. So now I'm going to use these halves to make a felt a last, a stand-in for a last. And um, actually, I've already done that too. Um, here's the last. I've taken, made a pattern from this side here and from this side here. And I used the sole pattern that um, I had used under my foot. And I put it together and made a little last. Actually, I, it's not such a little last. Um, I cut just a little bit inside the line because this a duct tape should be the size of the shoe. So I want my foot to be a little bit smaller. So I cut about, as I was cutting out um, these upper pieces, I cut inside the line about 3 sixteen. So I pressed um, the duct tape down on just a piece of typing paper and I'm going to make a mean form from these two halves, which means a mean is the average. So I want to make an average of the top lines and an average of the um, line down the center of the toe and the back. And I want to cut this to my um, top line. When I made the felt last, I just cut straight across because it didn't need that indention. But for um, the actual shoe pattern, I'm going to cut that out. And while I'm at it, I'm going to cut at the ba base of the heel and turn this in a little bit more. This is kind of fudging, but I know we need to do that. So I'm going to draw around, I guess this would be the inside of the foot, since I believe I did my right foot, with the Sharpie marker so you can see it. And then I will flip this over and superimpose the other side onto this pattern. I'll try to match up the base of the heel and this little hump there on the toe and draw around it. And so maybe you're getting the idea now of what it means by the average.
I've got a discrepancy here in my top line, so I can choose to make that top line. I'll make my mean line with this other colored marker. Um, the center of the toe line is almost exactly the same, but I'll go to the mean halfway between those two. And here, um, I'll dip this line down just a little bit to be kind of the average. As I said, I can make this line any way I want to. I'm going to keep it low. I'm not going to go up into that space. The bottom of the pattern, the bottom edge down here, we would expect this to be different from the inside and the outside since you have more flesh on the outside of the foot. And um, usually I'd see a little more pronouncement of toe on the inner piece, the inside of the shoe. Uh, and I uh, don't want to forget to do the back of the heel, but I'm going to fudge even a little more. I'll go between these two lines, but I'm coming in a little more at the top of the heel. So, so this would be my, when I cut this out, that will be a mean. I'll have the mean uh, on the front toe seam. I'll have a mean of a top line that I like, and uh, we'll have the mean at the back of the heel.